uh, Mr. Jer David Gerald, uh, President and CEO, Security uh, Investor Association of Singapore, uh, colleagues, students, uh, distinguished guests, la ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the joint symposium of, uh, for uh, corporate governance and valuation in Asia. And this is uh, an event that is co-sponsored by uh, SKBI and SIAS. Uh, and this is uh, uh, one of the occasions that uh, we come together as uh, to celebrate uh, our research work, which is relevant to the industry as well. And I'm, I'm very uh, happy to welcome uh, all of you here. I, I am Aurobindo Ghosh. I'm the program director in SKBI, and I will be the host for the, for the morning. To start uh, the proceedings, I would like to request that please put your uh, cell phones to silent sal mode and, uh, and uh, please reserve the questions till the end of the presentations. Uh, just a few things about SKBI. Uh, we, uh, we started, uh, this is the Singh Kibun's Institute of Financial Economics that has, uh, has been in the forefront of pioneering research uh, at SMU that on one hand has been academically path-breaking uh, at the same time relevant to the financial industry and the community. So one of the first attempts in achieving uh, such a lofty goal was at the Center for Corporate, uh, Govern uh, Corporate and Investor Responsibility, CCIR, at SKBI, uh, at the creation of, uh, uh, with the creation of the Singapore Corporate Governance Index at the genesis of, of SKBI itself back in 2008. So without further ado, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome Professor Arnu Dimayer, President of uh, SMU, to deliver his welcome address on the relevance of good corporate governance practices, not just in Asia, but the world as well. Um, good morning, Mr. David Gerald, uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Securities Investors Association of Singapore, distinguished guests, uh, colleagues and students, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to, in my name also, to welcome you here uh, this morning for this uh, symposium on corporate governance and valuation in Asia. Uh, I'm not a specialist as an academic of this, but I'm actually a practitioner because I've been in quite a few boards and I have run, I wouldn't say a few times into trouble, but I've discovered over uh, my practice life, let me put it that way, how important good governance is all about. And for that reason, I think is that this uh, event is really timely. Uh, as we all know that in recent years, there has been an increased awareness and definitely a higher level of rigorous discussion here in Singapore, but also an overseas calling for greater uh, corporate governance and better cor corporate governance. Um, I think that is partially uh, for good reasons, uh, i.e. a result of better public education and wider coverage in the press. Regrettably, it's probably also for the number of bad reasons, uh, i.e. a result of several high-profile scandals and ethical lapses that have been brought to light on a global level. So, not being a specialist, I sort of, in preparation for today, I was thinking about what is for me really corporate governance. And I'll just give you a brief reminder, though I know that in this room there are people who know much more about it uh, on a conceptual and practical basis than I do. But it, it's clear that a publicly listed company operates as a form of a representative government. Uh, the owners, uh, in this case the shareholders, elect a board of directors as their representatives to manage the affairs of the business. And that board then delegates responsibility to, of, for the actual operations to the CEO whom they hire. So that CEO, or that president in my particular case for example, is then accountable to the board of directors, or board of trustees, which collectively and individually is accountable to the shareholders. We don't have shareholders, but we have as a university uh, responsibility towards our stakeholders, i.e. society uh, expressed through the Ministry of Education in, uh, to a large extent. Um, in addition to its role in the CEO selection, the board also advises on and consents to the selection of businesses and strategies of the firm as well as overseas results. And in some, this system of authoritative uh, direction or government is what I would know or I would uh, call corporate governance here. Now, the relative effectiveness of corporate governance has a profound effect on how, how well a business performs. And I, I not only say this because that's what research indicates, and that's actually probably the most important reason, but also from my personal experience. I've worked in different boards with different qualities of corporate governance, and it, I have really seen out of uh, personal experience that the better the corporate governance is organized, the better the company actually operates. 
When the system, on, on the other hand, of corporate governance breaks down, lapses of what we quite often see sensationally in the press, known as corporate scandals, then happen. Now, these debacles, if they happen and when they happen, are extremely costly to shareholders, to the firms, and often even, as we've seen, to the communities in which these firms operate. We, can, we all know the examples. Internationally, companies like Enron in the US, Arthur Anderson, who still knows that name, right? WorldCom in the US, but also more recently, Sogen or Société Générale in Europe have captured headlines in both the main and in the financial press. And closer to home, we've had Satyam in India or Chinese aviation oil here in Singapore that have raised the importance of having in place a system of checks and balances in the firm. Now, corporate scon scandals involving spectacular bankruptcies and inappropriate accounting practices, mainly in the United States, have had another effect. The public outcry for justice prompted the US government to take firm action. And this resulted in the passing of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, commonly called SOX, right, which sets enhanced standards for all US com public company boards management and public accounting firms. The SOX has actually had a very good impact in some ways, and it has really cleaned up to some extent some of the practices that companies had. But we also know that there that has been a lot of writing about the negative impact of the act. A higher compliance, compliance cost has made going public a more challenging way for entrepreneurs to raise capital. Or from my personal experience, one of the companies in which I, was in the I am in the board of directors, we decided to withdraw from the New York uh, Stock Exchange because the cost of complying with SOX was more than a million euros per year. And we didn't, in the trade-off, didn't feel that the advantages of being on the New York Stock Exchange were high enough compared to the, uh, the cost. The, the, and we didn't take into account even the time that our management and uh, the board actually spent on complying with SOX. From our perspective, this was not a negative commitment, uh, uh, opinion about the, the value of good governance and good uh, rules and standards, but it was that at some moment in time, the compliance cost isn't worth uh, the advantage of being in the United States. That complex record keeping may well be responsible actually also for the decline in IPOs in the US. And also many firms may be forced to delist, as I said, we did. Uh, hence, over time, SOX has effectively somewhat stifled innovation for, in particular, SMEs, although the company <coughs> I'm referring to was not at all an SME. Now, the question when we think about uh, corporate governance here is, do universities play a role? We are here at SMU and we are here at a university for the world of business and management, and what kind of role can we play? I'm convinced that we have an important role to play. After all, uh, we, can be, we can have a key role in being the test bed and an incubator for you, the future business leaders. Universities, universities must develop young people with a strong sense of business ethics and an appreciation that not all deals should be about maximizing profit. Uh, last week I was uh, not in this room but in another room here talking about the importance of corporate governance and ethics in business and I still uh, will maintain that uh, ethics, whenever in a decision ethics uh, enter, uh, and governance as an um, element to uh, ensure that ethics, that it, they usually are some of the most difficult decisions I had to make in my life. Um, here, here at SMU, uh, we know that every single one of our students, regardless of their field of study, is required to take a course in ethics and social responsibility. And each time I mention that uh, outside SMU, I get the question, can you really teach ethics? I'm convinced we can. It's like teaching playing the piano. You need to have some talent sometimes, you need perhaps some, some other aspects of it, but you really can hone the skills, you can really teach it. Indeed, one of our aims is to teach our students to refine their instincts so that they can recognize and address potentially difficult situations as they develop and not after the fact. Right? Once your awareness is sharpened, uh, you can be inspired to look towards your personal moral compass in ethically uh, difficult and ch challenging situations. But apart from the teaching, which is very important uh, as a university, we obviously have also a very role, important role to play in terms of research. Uh, at here, at SMU, and you mentioned already, uh, the Center for Corporate and Investor Responsibility, or CCIR, headed by Associate Professor Jeremy Goh, 
uh, and housed in the Sim Ki Boon Institute for Financial Economics, is really about promoting discussion between academic and business communities on best practices in corporate governance. One of the major projects that CCIR has been involved in is the development of a comprehensive and unbiased corporate governance index for companies listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. And I'm sure that uh, Jeremy Go, when you talk about it, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in, in much more detail, so I will not steal uh, your thunder here. Uh, I'm pleased today to see the adoption of academic research by the business community, starting with uh, SIAS. This is for us and for CCIR a key milestone, because I've always emphasized the need for faculty research to have industry relevance. The point of doing good research is not only to get published, you need to get published, but it's also about having impact on industry and making a difference. That's what universities and university research really have to have as an ambition. So today's memorandum of agreement is an excellent example in my mind of the meeting of the minds and exchange of ideas between industry and academia. And I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations to CCIR and SIAS on this significant and collaborative partnership. As we said, uh, Mr. Gerald, uh, you're now part of the family here. Uh, you're almost a permanent resident, a PR of uh, SMU. Uh, please feel very welcome, and thank you, and once again, congratulations on signing this agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Professor De Meyer. Uh, uh, that was really enlightening, uh, your, ins your insight into, into the, the field of corporate governance. I would like to invite uh, Mr. David Gerald, he is the President and CEO of Securities Investors Association of Singapore, to deliver a speech on promoting good corporate governance through market initiatives. Thanks, Mr. Gerald. Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Dimea. President of Singapore Management University, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. You know, standing in a university lecture room, I can't resist saying this. I'm now feeling very nostalgic. <laughs> I go back to the 60s when I was in the University of Singapore, and that was the greatest time in my life, getting my law degree and getting my wife. <laughs> So don't miss out on that, you young people. Get your husbands or wife in the campus. <laughs> um, I'm not an academic, but uh, I'm an activist. I don't know I'm in the right room, but uh, I would like to say I'm a social entrepreneur because I like to change mindsets, shift paradigm, uh, make a paradigm shift in uh, people's you know, way of doing things so that the capital markets in Singapore could develop. And I'm very excited about this relationship with SMU because you really established uh, through Singapore Institute the research center on governance, the index, and you've shown actually uh, you've shown leadership in the area of corporate governance. And we are very excited to work with you. And we are also a family because Professor Goh uh, uh, sits in my management committee. So he wears two hats, both in the SMU and SIS as well. All right. So now let me. Uh, I'm tasked this morning to speak to you about promoting good corporate governance through market initiatives. All right. So let me share with you what are the initiatives that SIS has put in place over the last 12 years to improve corporate governance in Singapore. Why does SIS place so much? importance in corporate governance. For investors, corporate governance failures, as Professor just, uh, as President Bimea just mentioned the scandals, can wipe out entire life savings. And it has. The Lehman Brothers collapse saw many investors lose their life savings. Singapore has had its fair share of such corporate governance failures and scandals. The barring collapse, uh, CAO debacle are some recent examples which are fresh in our minds. More recently, the Olympus scandal in Japan is a timely reminder uh, of the grim prospect of a similar scandal happening again in Singapore. 
We can never say that we will be free of scandals. As long as corporations are run by people, to her is only human, and there will be occasions when this will happen. However, at the same time, I would like to say that there is empirical evidence that adopting good corporate governance practices also improves financial performance. Research by Lipa and Governance Metrics International in 2004 showed that managers of large cap mutual funds tend to outweigh companies, outweigh companies with above average corporate <coughs> governance profiles. In addition, those funds which were heavily outweighted in well governed companies outperformed the average fund in both three and and five-year holding periods. Now, McKinsey in 2000 surveyed 200 institutional investors in Asia and 89% reported that they would pay more for the shares of a well-governed company with comparable financial performance. In Singapore, the PricewaterhouseCoopers Corporate Governance Survey of institutional investors also in year 2000 indicated the need to continuously improve Singapore's standard of corporate governance to meet the increasing expectations of investors and provide a climate conducive to the orderly development of capital markets. Let me quote, if a company lists in a market where corporate governance and transparency requirements are not as demanding as USA, investors will factor that risk premium into the valuation of the stock. This is by Senior Managing Director of NASDAQ. However, there are difficulties in analyzing whether good corporate governance practices <coughs> actually translate into better performance. Firstly, Many companies still practice the box ticking style of corporate governance and it is difficult to measure the real quality of corporate governance in companies. Secondly, many factors affect measures like P ratios. While governance is one such factor but the efficiency but the soundness of the business model, quality qualify, quality of management Efficiency in managing operations and internal control are all equally important. More recently, in 2008, a study of listed companies in Asia undertaken by Associate Professor Jeremy Go of Lee Kong Chen School of Business of this uh, university found that good corporate governance practices does result in long-term better corporate performance and the study is consistent with many international studies in USA and Europe. So what are the market initiatives that SIS has put in place to promote corporate governance? In year 2000, SIS has acknowledged the importance of governance and transparency in the development of our capital markets, so we launched the Most Transparent Company Award and in 2003, and that's an award, transparency award, we work with the analysts, equity analysts, the fund managers, and the financial journalists in Singapore. They do the nominations, and we do the scoring. And in 2003, with the development of corporate governance code for the first time in Singapore, we launched the Singapore Corporate Governance Award to recognize companies that best meet both the letter of the law and the spirit of the code from the investor's perspective. Oh, your president just mentioned about his question whether ethics can be measured. This year, SIS will incorporate the integrity index of corporate, uh, corporates in Singapore by a globally renowned and leading corporate governance institute which will work in which will work hand in hand with SIS. So, not only governance, but we want to see how the company fares in integrity. This is something I have not told Professor Go yet, but you'll have to incorporate that in your scoring. 
Since SIS's first investor choice awards launched in 2000, there have been other initiatives that also recognize good cop governance and performance by SIS. More recently, to meet the changing global landscape following the large <coughs> financial crisis, SIS, together with industry partners, launched the Singapore Corporate Governance Week in 2010 to, to create a greater awareness of the importance of improving corporate governance standards and providing a platform to bring together the regulators, the big four accounting firms, corporate lawyers and corporate governance practitioners in Singapore. Additionally, SIS also launched in 2010 for the first time as part of the Singapore Corporate <coughs> Governance Week a pledge by public listed companies and other professional bodies to publicly pledge to support good corporate governance standards. We are encouraged by the response we received. And although we are about six months ahead of the, this year's Corporate Governance Week, we already have 40 listed companies have registered with us to pledge this year. I am pleased to announce uh, that this initiative is well accepted by listed companies. SIAS is also pleased to announce that we are commissioning SMU Sim Kibun Institute to develop a new scorecard for the selection of Singapore Corporate Governance Award this year. This new scorecard will include OECD principles, the latest revision of the Singapore Code, Corporate Governance Code, and initiatives relating to investor rights by SIS. We are not only pleased, but excited to be working closely with SMU, Sim Kibun Institute on this important market initiative. So what is the next step in improving corporate governance? We never stop working. Good corporate governance is a journey and not a destination. Thus, at SIS, we will continue to find ways to help listed companies to improve good corporate governance standards and also communicate, th communicate them by engaging them. Today, I am pleased to announce that SIS would embark on helping investors to identify the top 100 Singapore listed companies who excel both in corporate governance and financial performance. The CIA's top 100 companies will be tracked based on their performance in corporate governance practices, both in the letter of the law and spirit of the law, and highlights which will include the major areas of concerns to investors, such as independence on the board, separation of chairman and CEO, internal audit procedures and controls, risk management, remuneration policies, amongst others. These market initiatives, we think, will go a long way to help investors make informed decisions, investment decisions. It is only through market initiatives that we gain the support of corporations to willingly raise standards in corporate governance rather than just the legislative route. The focus on corporate governance from the investor's perspective will therefore provide a foundation for the development of our capital markets and help investors build wealth. Together with Sim Kibun Institute of SMU, with your excellent research and expertise, SIS is confident that we will make further strides in this area. I must thank you, Mr. President and, and your uh, management for allowing Professor Go to sit with us in the management <laughs> committee and to work hard for us. And I'm sure that uh, you will see more and more improvements in Singapore. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. That was really insightful. And, and to know more about uh, the things that are coming up, uh, we are in for some exciting times. So now uh, we proceed for the MOA signing ceremony. So can I invite uh, Mr. Gerald and President uh, Omar to come over here for, uh, for the signing ceremony? It's a bit cramped, but it's okay.
Yes. Let's put a picture of that.